to Mateo, Mateo to Metalidium Pages. It's a great pleasure to talk with you about Source of Null, this new album, The Loss of Beauty, and more things related well, to the metal war in general. So, for the start of the interview, how was the band during this well, during these three years? Because the band released your theory, released the theory album at 2020 at the beginning of the pandemic. Now we are well, the the pandemic is completely gone in the world, and now you are releasing a new album. So how was these three years of composition? The composition was during the pandemic, written in the pandemic, or perhaps was during the sessions of the last days of Beyond the Shores and the in the in the twin and the one well, in the three album. Yeah. So actually, the loss of beauty. So the album that is about to be released was recorded as our third album. Uh, and uh, and then the loss of beauty, which uh, sorry, the, um, uh, beyond the shores, which came out as the third album, was composed after that. Uh, we we decided to switch the the publishing of uh, those two albums uh, for a couple of reasons. First, a few problems that we had at the time with our previous uh, label, um, and second, because of again what was going on with the pandemic and everything. So we. We wanted to put out a more experimental album for uh, very strange times, let's say. Um, so actually, yeah, the composition of The Loss of Beauty was around 2019, actually, um, between 2018 and 2019. So it, it's already four years. <laughs> four um, years. Yeah, yeah. Um, and yeah, in the last three years, uh we we spent a lot of time trying to promote uh, beyond the shores beyond the shores our third album and of course we couldn't go around and play uh live shows we we barely did any uh in those years of course so we were trying our best to do as much as possible from behind our laptops uh, uh to to promote the album uh there was an incredible uh, video that was shot for that album uh, by sanda movies uh, the team that we work with for all our videos. Um, so we tried to do something in that sense in our la in the last three years. And then in the last year, from 2022 and beginning of 2023, of course, we focus 100% on the promotion of The Loss of Beauty, which is about to come out uh, this week. Mm, okay. Okay. Nice, nice, nice to hear. So you told me that you that yeah, that you had problems with the previous label. So we talk we we spoke about Candlelight Candlelight Records because Candlelight Records is well known as a mainstream label because it's the big leaks. So what kind of problems did you have with Candlelight to change with Sepir uh, Spikerot Records because is this label is like a new one here? Yeah. So we were very lucky for our first album. We had the chance to come out with uh, Candlelight, which, of course, for a new band is such a nice label. Yeah. You know, it's a, it has so many important bands uh, throughout history. Just hope it, just to name one that uh, we all really like in the band. Um, and actually, for our first album, things were great. Uh, we had quite a lot of promotion and help from the label. Um, good response from, from fans. So it was a really nice way to start. Uh, but then Candlelight was bought by Spine Fan Records, uh, an, an even bigger band that, for example, publishes a record by Ghost, uh, just to say one of the most famous band. And of course, for them, we were the, a very, very small fish. Uh, yeah. We, all the bands in the uh, Candlelight catalog were acquired by Spine Farm, but they they didn't really do much for us. Uh, so there were a lot of very weird situations where we couldn't even publish our own video to promote our songs when the albums came out. And they, these videos, for copyright reasons, they were blocked on YouTube, even though they were our own videos. And it took like if more than a year to solve these kind of problems. Um, and communication with the label was very, very slow and very, very difficult. They were not responsive at all. Um, so in the end, we say, OK, for the third album, even though the label has an option with us, uh, we want to try to do something different. So we managed to move to a very small label, Spike Records, 
which actually is owned by our own singer and two other uh, guys. And this way we were so much more in control of everything from the music to the promotion to the production of the album. And the results uh, were great. It, it paid off a lot. Our numbers grew so much by working. Of course, you have to do a lot because you have basically have to do everything by yourself and in uh, strict collaboration with the label, of course. But we are we were all the same people because in the label there was uh, David, yeah. our singer. So a lot of stuff to do, but we we spend a lot of time and a lot of energies, but it paid off. So we we are happy about it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Well, one thing that you told me in the in the first question, when you answer the first question, is that these these both albums, or the Loss of the Beauty and Beyond the Shore, was composed at the same time. So, but you choose which which one which which one came first. And the curious things about the Beyond the Shore on the Dead and Dying is that this album was well has one song compared with this yeah. with this album. So, why did you decide to choose an album with one song first? And then they release an album with more than ten more, more, more than ten songs. It is like beauty, loss and beauty. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so for our third album, it was at the time it was not clear yet if we it would be released with Spine Farm Records, Candlelight Records, or with this new independent label. Uh so we said, okay, we let's make a very experimental album which goes in a different direction where we usually compose music. And then if it comes out with candlelight spine farm, okay, um, maybe the results will be not will not be great because for the, our second albums, because of all these issues that I explained, results were not great. But then with the album that we really think is our way of playing and composing music, the loss of beauty, we will be with a new label uh, because our contract was for three albums for okay. Candlelight. Um, that was the initial idea, but then starting the composition, we even if it was very experimental and very different, we really liked what was coming out. So we just said, no, we also want this album to go really, really well. Uh, so let's try to find a way to, to go independent. Uh, immediately also with this third album because we really like it even if it's very different so this was the more practical reason let's say uh, and the other reason was yeah there was this situation in the world which was very strange and very new to everyone um, and we thought okay maybe it's a good time to publish something that is also very experimental and very different for us um, and also, it's something that is a little bit more difficult maybe to play live because it's a 40 minute long song. Mm -hmm. So if you are playing in festivals, sometimes you cannot play that long yeah. if you are early in the in the bill of the festivals. So we say, OK, right now we cannot play live. Let's put out this album. And then maybe when things get sorted out and we can start playing live again, we will have a standard album with a lot of small tracks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yes, that's true. So, well, now during this aspect, I saw into your well, into your Facebook page when you on social media that you will be you will be embark on a new tour promoting this new album, especially. So, but as you told me a few seconds ago, that beyond the shore, the your shore wasn't a correct publishing because it's his album during the pandemic, no shows at that time. Etc. A lot of cancelled tours for around the world was cancelled. Well, a lot were cancelled yeah. at that time. So, how was how will be this new tour embark for the show of Nur? Perhaps you will present all promoting just the lots of beauty, or perhaps you will mix the some some uh, some excerpts uh, parts from beyond the shores because we we in in, in talking if, if we speak about the promotion and the publicity, uh, you have now two albums to promote than just one. Yeah, that's true. Um, actually, we will not play any part of Beyond the Shores in this new tour uh, that's going to start the end of this uh, month. Um, yeah, just to briefly mention, we will be the opening act for uh first part of the tour. Uh, will be uh, Swallow the Sun um, and Avatarium. 
and second part will be Swallow the Sun and Draconia. Uh, but we will promote The Loss of Beauty with a couple of songs taken from our first two albums. Um, if we want to play Beyond the Shores, it has to be in its entirety. We don't really see it uh, like something that we can pick parts and, uh, and play it live. Uh, we, we really see it something that is worth playing entirely. And actually, we had the chance to do it a few times. Uh, probably the, the best situation uh, was uh, playing it at Medal Days uh, in, uh, in Slovenia, one of the nicest uh, festivals in Europe. Um, and it was, was really fun. Uh, other than that, we also played in other two or three uh, festivals. Uh, so we had the chance to, to promote it a little bit, even if it was two years after it came out. And uh, people really appreciated that. Uh, but yeah, we, we don't want to just pick parts uh, of that albums and play uh, and play them live. Uh, if we want to play it, we play it entirely. So we will take the chance to promote the album that is just coming out right now. Mm -hmm. Okay. Other aspect about the, the loss of beauty is that the album was composed four years ago. So in 2019, you told me. But how do you feel the deal? Well, I, I spoke with a lot of musicians uh, in during the, the during in the Mentalero and stuff, doing a lot of interviews, and they love to play new songs. So if we spoke about this aspect, loss of beauty has four years old. Now you are, I think you are composed new material for the next album. It's completely normal for them for the month. So how do you feel playing old songs in a new tour? Uh, in, in a way, it's a little bit weird because we, we listen to this song <laughs> for four years now. Uh, but at the same time, after the composition and the production, we had so much to do with uh, Beyond the Shores uh, that we kind of stopped taking care of uh, the loss of beauty because everything was done. Uh, and we were just waiting for the right moment to publish it and see how it was going with pandemic. Um, so yes, they are old, but we didn't spend too much time playing them. We started rehearsing them a few months ago in preparation of the album coming out and the tour. So yeah, they are chronologically old, but they still sound uh, uh, new to us, let's say. And this time with, in this tour, it will be our first time playing live uh, these songs. So we're, they don't sound old to us. We are quite excited to play them live. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, okay. Oh, well, now we're talking about from the about the planning in general from the experience well, of the band because you have four albums now. This you start the band since the beginning in 2013. And now this year the band will will well, will will accomplish 10 years of existence because you start the band in 2015, as I said. So perhaps yeah. you will prepare something special because two albums in a row in 2019, both was finished, were finished. Now, 10 years later, the band released the, their full album, full album in the studio. So perhaps you will do in this new tour upcoming, you will prepare something special for the, for the first 10 years of existence of Shores of Nulu. Uh, yeah, we, we spoke about this uh, for a couple of years now. We still haven't decided yet what it will be. Uh, we discussed very different things. Uh, so we, we published our issue of our first album uh, in vinyl, for example, already uh, last year. We thought about, okay, maybe we can make a nice album of uh, cover songs, okay. uh, but uh, reinterpreted uh, in our way. Um, maybe we can play in a few spots, a uh, few special shows with uh, songs that we don't play that much, uh, but we still didn't take a decision on it. Um, not sure what will happen because of course right now we are very busy with promoting the albums and we have booking of shows in the summer and festivals and so on so we will have to see uh, yeah but it would be nice to do something special uh, for 10 years that's true yeah. okay okay well you start the band as I said in 2013 the, your first album was really quite with the sense was in 2014 now 10 years well 10 nine, nine years later you, we have of your fourth album in the studio. So how many things changed in during these 10 years in the band 
since since the first album that came out at that time, when you are, I think you all did by yourself at that time, then you support by the candlelight, candlelight at that time. But now you are more in an independent level, as you told me, because the singers there, a lot you are, I think you you help the singer to spread the music that is speak a spiker with records did so how 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 the thing changed in during these 10 years of existence and shorts of do so in terms of composing music uh we still use the same approach so we start from uh the guitars so our two guitarists uh, gabriel and Raffaele, are the main uh, composers and they they write down the main melodies and main structure of a song they also like put down an idea in the drum machine of what the drums should sound like and so on. And then me, Emiliano, the drummer, and David, the singer, try to arrange our parts and we review the structures of the song together. So that pr pretty much stayed the same. Um, maybe with the first album, this approach was a little bit faster. So it was more direct. And now we think a bit more about the structure of the song. We put a little bit more attention on small details. Um, so that that stayed pretty much the same, but in terms of promoting our music and all the organizational aspect of the band, of course, now we are much more experienced. Uh, at first, uh, we have, we a lot of the work was done by Gabriele and Davide, who are also, uh, concert organizers in Italy, and they had previous band, uh, which they were touring Europe with, and they had quite a lot of experience. Um, but now also me, Raphael, and Emiliano learn a lot about the music industry and how it works and how we can help the band. Um, and of course, everyone learned a lot of things in ten years. Uh, a lot of we made a lot of mistakes that we are trying now to, to learn from. So uh, in that sense, I think everything, the process right now is smoother. And yeah, you, you can we can see from the results from Spotify numbers that what we're doing is going in the right direction. And step-by-step step, every album, we learn something new. Um, so I think we are going in the right direction in that sense. Mm, great, great. Well, talking about, especially from this new album, I really love it. I, I, well, perhaps you read uh, all our reviewer in Metalidium. We put a nine, yeah. of nine over ten. It's a great score for for the album. Yeah, it's uh, awesome. Thank you. <laughs> so about this, about so about this album, I didn't know the one aspect about this album, and I told him into the review that this album drinks a lot from the Finnish is Finnish doom metal scene because I I I I felt a lot of Swallow the Sun, a Rain Pain, a lot of bands that I know for many people into the Finnish scene. But the curious thing is yeah. now that you are embark a new tour with the Swallow of the Sun. I think a biggest influence influence for you because Shores of Doom over this loss of beauty has a lot of reminiscence from Swallow of the Sun because it normally has influence from that. So how do you feel or how do you deal with the aspect that you will embark in a tour with a with a with a one one with one of the biggest influence from Shores of Doom? Uh, of course, it's amazing. Uh, I mean, we were listening to their albums for so many years, pretty much every one of us, um, and sharing the stage with this kind of band, Draconian as well. Uh, it's it's fantastic. Uh, we are very happy. Um, we we were lucky enough to to share stages with other bands that had an influence of us in the past. But of course, spending one month and a half together on the same bus with the band. It's, it's fantastic. Uh, I, what can I say? We're just super happy about it. Uh, it's going to be a great experience, I think. And mm -hmm. of course, the fact that, yeah, we we kind of share the same genre of music it means that maybe, uh, yeah, we can be known by fans of uh, Swall of the Sun that don't know us yet. Uh, and that's also great from a promotional point of view. Mm -hmm. Okay, and you tell me, do you tell me that perhaps you will do a a cover album with songs that the, that the songs that influence the band. So perhaps into this cover album, you will incorporate or will you include a swallow in the sun song, or perhaps you will do like a, well, like many bands do it, like old songs from the seventies and eighties 
playing just in, in style in metal style. So perhaps you will do that, or perhaps you will use more uh, uh, a doom dead approach with the playing some song from Anathema, Paradise Lost, My Day in Bright, Wall of the Sun. Uh, when we discussed this uh, this thing, the idea was to do a cover of songs that are not metal. So like okay. very things that we like, but maybe are very different genres and, and just to rearrange it in our own way. Uh, I remember we discussed, yeah, very rock or even kind of electronic uh, songs uh just to be rearranged so i i think it's a it's a more difficult approach but it's a bit more fun and more original uh also for the listeners because they maybe they don't expect this band that plays doom gothic whatever to like some things uh, i don't know abba stuff or uh, okay, things okay. like this that are that are very different so i think it's a more uh, fun uh, approach okay okay other other expert into your discography is that Quintessence when I rem when I discovered the band with this loss of beauty I didn't know before this album but when I when I back in time I hear all albums I remember when I when I when I I hear all completely less Quintessence is more more raw in some ways but this new loss of beauty has more melancholic more melodic ways to to do you by yourself your music into this so how do you, how do you define the whole concept is the loss of beauty because the name is 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 beautiful too. The loss of beauty. So, from a lyric point of view, uh, the main theme of the loss of beauty is to enjoy things, even though their beauty and their life is going to fade at some point. Um, so we we don't just have to be sad because things are. Uh, going away in our life from us or they are changing and we don't recognize them as they uh, as beautiful as, as at the beginning of our life and this could be applied to people it could be applied to objects it could be applied to relationship with other people it could be anything um, so that's the approach that Davide and the team that Davide want to, to express in this uh, uh, in this album and it goes a little bit in every song, pretty much in every song. So it's not a concept album, but there is a little bit of this theme in every song. Uh, in Kings of, in uh, at the time of uh, Quiescence, uh, songs were much more direct. Um, so yeah, you had easier maybe song also musically, they were easier to listen to. Um, but I, I guess this is part of natural evolution of a band. After four albums and 10 years, you it's natural that you want to do things a little bit differently. Okay. <coughs> Sorry. Okay. And talking <laughs> about Avon, well, we are as, as, uh, usually the quest, next question is uh, very difficult, especially for a melodic death to metal band like you are, because uh, this, this is loss of beauty has a lot of sensation, has a lot of textures, has a lot of a lot info, a lot of info, a, a lot of talking about to do, to hear more. In, this is, if you hear one time or three times, you can find new, new, new waves in the music. So, but the new generation is not like me. It's not like he, like you. Perhaps you do this album. It's like the people is, want to to hear just singles. Spread the music by singles. We return in time with the forties and fifties. No, without at that time the music just spring by by, by singles. So. For you, yeah. which songs or which song or which songs for you capture whole essence from this new The Loss of Beauty? Is possible to reduce this new album in just one, two, three songs for the new generation talking? Um I think probably the first two songs of the album pretty much capture the 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 atmospheres. Uh, so it would be uh, Destination Wolf and The Last Flower, which were two of the singles actually that we published promoting the promoting the album. Um, I think they are both melancholic, but also quite energetic. Uh, there is a mix of growls and uh, clean vocals and uh, harmonic vocals. Um, so I think those two could be uh, pretty well... Uh, rounded uh, summary of the entire album. And it's convenient that it's the first two songs. So it, 
you, you immediately get an idea of what the album would be. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Other aspect one. Other other aspect about this new album. I I I I, I always see the, a lot of sensations, a lot of the, a lot of textures. So, so, so into this aspect, perhaps do you hear the well the 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 matter or the subject uh, that is called is the is um is the, when the people when when a uh, when a people listen the music they feel taste they see colors. And they and and they smell taste, they smell odors when they hear the music. So into this aspect that the synesthesia are, so which odors, smells, uh, or tastes and colors that the listeners will find into the, this into this new album, The Loss of Beauty. Well, that's uh, that's difficult to imagine for me. I mean, I mean, I can imagine colors. Um, for this kind of melancholic music, I always think about grayish blue dark blue dark green colors these kind of things uh taste and uh, smells it's uh it's quite difficult to, to imagine uh i don't know uh it could be like taste and smells of a complex uh, wine for example or a spirit something like this that's that that's something that i could associate uh, with it probably yeah mm -hmm. oh, great great well, talking about the composition process in general for the music from the shores of Nu. So usually the, the the musician will compose, or you are you are influenced by day by day with things, your day by day work, why family, etc. A lot of things happen during your composition process, and usually the album is usually the album is the results of the times when you did something. So for all musicians, so but in the, into this concept. There is a way to compose music for a lot of musicians. They compose when you carry away by the feelings in the moment that you create the song, the album. But at the same time, when you create albums, you think in times, mathematical times, three ribs, four ribs, that part of 340, etc., etc. in this aspect. So into this aspect, how do you connect the sensations of the album when you care, when you create a new album? Perhaps you perhaps you think like the music is a concept, not thinking, uh, guided by the feelings, guided guided by the sensations, or perhaps the music is a concept is a concept thinking. When the when you think, uh, I I mean about this the concept thinking. When you think uh, three four times, we will do these riffs, and then will you create the, the music? So how do you how do you connect this aspect to create music? Is a concept thinking or is a concept not thinking? Uh, I think we are definitely guided by emotions. So if we feel that something we are composing is right, we go that way. We don't think too much about strict structures. Okay, no, we we have to go for uh, 16 bars and for the verse and then eight bars for the chorus. We, we don't think it that way. Uh, of course, we don't play like crazy progressive stuff. So the structure are still pretty straightforward. There is yeah, quite a common sequence of uh, verse and chorus and verse and then bridge and uh, outro and stuff like this. Uh, so we we don't really worry too much about the structure. We just try to compose. And if it feels right to us, if we enjoy it, then that's fine. And uh, if we feel that we want to do something yeah, in a strange time signature for uh, for a few bars, then uh, that's also okay. But most of the time it doesn't happen. We we fall into the more uh, standard uh, structure of a uh, music composition, let's say. We don't play two long songs. I think our longest songs is, if, except for uh, Beyond the Shores, which was 38 minutes, of course, and that, that's a completely different approach. But for the standard uh, albums, let's say, we don't really go over six minutes, which for a metal song is really normal. Hmm. Okay. Okay. We are very close to in this interview, Matteo. And for this aspect, what kind of plans do you have for this new album? Well, we know that you will embark on a tour in the next next couple of weeks or next couple of months. But after that tour, perhaps you will embark on more tours in Europe. Perhaps you will present more videos for this new album or perhaps you will embark on your first u.s tour or who knows in uh, in latin america you will play here because 
Now the, the the huge festivals appears in Mexico, especially and Brazil too. There's a lot of new bands, old bands came gathering in just one place. Yeah. Uh, so after this tour, we already have a couple of festival uh, participation confirmed. Um, one is in the UK uh, in the summer, uh, end of May. Another one is in uh, Romania uh, in September. And there will be a few more, uh, but still in uh, Europe or UK, uh, we we are trying to get out of the uh, of the region, of course, because it's always nice to go and play in a, in a place that you you never played. Um, but for now, we are focusing our growth in Europe because, of course, it's where we are. It's where it's the part that we can reach more easily. It's where the chances are coming from at the moment. Uh, so no US tour or, or no Latin America tour at the moment. But of course, if we will ever be contacted by a booking agency over there or, or uh, anyone interested in us going, we, we would be super happy to go. Um, but yeah, it's it's not uh, here at the moment, this, this opportunity. Hmm. Okay, okay. Well, other aspect about the, about the, about now in general, about the Italian scene, is that always mm -hmm. Italian scene present a good, a good level of bands and of bands because uh, we have the brutal death metal stuff from there that is amazing. Hideous Divinity, Oro Penance, the Evangelic, a lot, a lot. And now the black metal stuff like Mortary Drape. And now you are the melodic death metal stuff with its shores of dual. So why the always Italy bring bring us a good a good a good movement into the in metal in general? Because it's, Italy is well known about the well known bands. Yeah, yeah, it's interesting. Uh, I'm not sure where it comes from because, yeah, in the past, I mean, in the past years and the history of metal, let's say, Italy was not a country that were famous for bringing out uh, yeah. a lot of bands. Uh, I can think of November in the 90s that they were growing together with Catatonia, Opet, that kind of scene. But that was pretty much it. Of course, there were a few other bands, but if you compare it with the Scandinavian uh, scene uh, or the Central Europe scene, it was another level. So I don't know what happened in the last years. Uh, probably the fact that the world is so much globalized right now compared to 30 years ago and social networks. So there is so much sharing of information between everyone that people started picking up uh, with genres that were not really famous in Italy in the past. And especially, I have to say, in Rome, there is a very uh, fervent gothic doom scene, doom death scene. There are few bands that I really, really like, and they are doing quite well. Uh, friends of us, of course, we know each other, like uh, uh, the band of our producer, uh, Marco Mastrobuono, Ino, is doing also very great. Um, so, yeah, I think it has to do with the diffusion of information and uh, spreading uh, music uh, in, in a more globalized world, I have to say. Hmm. Okay. And uh, with this influence that you got from the 90s, perhaps do you have a special band from Italy that influenced you to play music or to, to play metal band? Uh, yeah, me personally, but I can speak for also for other people in the band. Um, from Italy, definitely November. November was the most influential. Um, because, yeah, we we love music from the 90s and them in the 90s put out so many nice albums uh, in the gothic scene. So uh, I, I have to, I, I'm quite sure that from Italy, that is the band that it influenced us the most um but also we are currently influenced by other bands uh there is a couple of bands from a friend of us uh that are doing very well they're called invernoir uh arson Irica, and veil of conspiracy these are three projects by a friend of us in rome um we play together quite a lot uh so yeah that's that would i would say it's a present influence at the moment but from the past, for sure, November for our genre was one of the biggest. 
Okay. And what is your opinion about one underestimated band that I remember that starts at the beginning in 2000, like Clean 1980, 1985, I know, 1980. Yeah. It's just a, 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 a lot of, a lot of people, a lot of, well, no, a lot of people. It's a band that few people know about this album. But when you hear this band, it's like, uh, has, has different approach to the, well, to the doom, to the god, to the rock, or to the indie music. So perhaps yeah. did you hear about and why this band is very now? I think one of the pillars of that 2000 was cleaned 19, 1918, but now the, the band disappeared completely from the scene. Yeah, yeah, they they are also are a very influential band in this, uh, yeah, this gothic, but also a little bit of post rock uh, indie scene. They had quite a lot of influence, and I really like them, but. Not sure what happened with them uh, at the moment. Um, why why they stopped uh, creating music? Um, I I remember spending a lot of time uh, listening to them, um, but I I don't know what happened with them to be honest. <laughs> okay. If okay, something okay. comes up, if if something comes up, I I would be really happy to listen to a new album, but I have no yeah. idea yeah. what will happen. No, no. I, I told you this. I told you this because for me, Undressed Momento was an, a huge im. Well, did a huge impact into the rock and metal scene at that time. I remember because, but no one knows remembers that band now. It's very curious because that at that time yes. was very original with with the way their sound at that time. Oh, one. Well, no, that's my point of view. So well, Mateo, the sad times arrive at this interview. I hope you enjoy this one like me doing this interview. You are a terrific guy. Congratulations on this new album. So love it. Love it. Uh, perhaps we want to add something to your man, to your Latin American fans and Metalino followers. Yeah. So if anyone wants to reach out, we have all the usual uh, channels. So uh, feel free to just send us a message uh, if you like our music uh, anywhere and we are happy to to have a chat with you. Um, just uh, follow us on Spotify for people who don't know us and see if you can maybe enjoy one or two songs and go from there. And of course, we will be yeah super interested in playing in Latin America. Uh, it's such a cool place from all aspects uh, of, uh, of life and not just music. Uh, so we will be super happy to go there. So if, any, if anyone is interested, just feel free to contact us. <laughs> 